This morning on Wake Up With Hope, we will be featuring an important talk from The Parenting Place. Faith for Today will join us to share a devotional thought and a short discussion on how our attitude affects our health. Don't miss it. Good morning, buenos dias, and what's Bonjour. it? Bonjour, <laughs> yes. Thank you for waking up with us here today. We're so glad you have chosen to join us from wherever in the world you're watching That's from. That's right. It's a lovely August morning here at Wake Up With Hope, and in many places in America, school has started mm. back up this week. And in our case, our kids are launching into another homeschool year. Yep, so. and we started on Monday, so yep. we're day three, it looks like right now. So as you get back into your routine, as we all get back into our new routines or start a routine that we had before, we invite you to start your days with Jesus. Put Him first. Give Him your stress, your anxieties, your burdens. Start the day opening His Word and allowing Him to lead you and guide you into a life of peace and order. Amen. And I, we hope our program gets you started moving that direction. It's such a blessing what we're going to have in store for you today. We have a devotional thought and we're also going to have some parenting tips. And we're going to continue with our series with Dr. Randy Bibbins on the eight laws of health. But first, let's take a look back at this day in history. On this day in history, in 1875, Matthew Webb, a 27-year-old merchant Navy captain, became the first known person to successfully swim the English Channel. Captain Webb accomplished the grueling 21-mile crossing, which really entailed 39 miles of swimming because of tidal currents, in 21 hours and 45 minutes. Webb set out to be to much fanfare the day before on August 24, during the overnight crossing from Dover, England to Calais, France, Captain Webb drank brandy, coffee, and beef tea to keep his strength and heat up. He was hailed as a national hero upon his return to England and a triumphal arc was erected in his honor in his hometown in Shropshire. The Daily Telegraph proclaimed, at this moment, the captain is probably the best known and most popular man in the world. What about you, friend? Are you in the channel of life? Are you on the upward road to eternal hope, joy, and peace? You know, Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the road, the only pathway to the Father and eternal life. And today he stands knocking at the door of your heart. Would you let him come in? And as you do, the most amazing thing will happen. You know, as trials come your way or as you stumble and fall, you don't have to rely on brandy, coffee, and what else was it? Beef tea. Beef tea to get you through like Matthew Webb did. Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit to be our comfort and guide. He has given us angels whose only job is to minister to you and I. You know, friend, all we have to do is say yes to Jesus. And he promises that his grace is sufficient to carry us through. I want to walk that narrow road to eternal bliss. Don't you? Amen. I do. I do too. You know, L-O-V-E, love. love. That's right. What can the V in love teach us about rules that illustrate love. Well, listen in as The Parenting Place brings us a practical illustration of the balance of the letter V and how it can transform our relationship with our children. Hey, what's that? Love. No, I mean in the, in the middle, that thing there. It's the V of love. <laughs> It's broken. No, it's just hinged. See? Well, what does it do? It keeps kids safe and helps them learn. What? That thing? Well, not this, but it stands for something that you do at home. You see, the sides of the V represent the rules you set for your kids to keep them safe. Yeah, nah, yeah, nah. Yeah, I'm not with you, bro. Hold on, hold on. You'll get it. You'll get it. Now, see how the V widens out as the child gets older? <laughs> Down the bottom there, when kids are babies, 
The rules are pretty tight. They can't go outside the park. Because they're just babies. That's right, that's right. But as they get older, they can play outside on the back lawn. And as they get older, they can play with their mates on the street and then ride their bikes to the shops. Choice to give me a feed. Well, whatever. And before long, they can go off to Wellington to university. Or off fishing to catch some kite. Yeah, yeah. The trick is to watch out to see how mature they are and not open the V up too quickly. Yeah. Nah, what do you mean? Well, jellyfish parents do this. They give their kids too much freedom too soon. They let their little kids wander around town without knowing where they are, or they go on the internet without any limits, and it's just way too dangerous. Mm. Uh, you've got to keep the V good and tight, hey? you know, keeps them safe. Yeah, no, 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 not too tight. That's what Sergeant Major parents do. They treat their eight-year-olds like five-year-olds. And, and they have rules for their 12-year-old that would be too tight even for a nine-year-old. Mm, what happens? Well, sometimes the kids just knuckle under and behave, but sometimes they sneak out of the V and do the things that you don't want them to do, but now they're doing it without you knowing about it. So they're going outside of your protection. Mm. The kids of a sergeant majors often learn to be sneaky. They look like angels while getting away with murder. Ah, uh, carpe. So how quick do you actually open this V up? Well, it could be different for every child. Some kids are more mature and can have more freedom, and others need rules for a bit longer. Mm, yeah, I can use that. Set some rules, that's the way I reckon. Just remember, it's the V of love. If you're thinking about rules, just think of it as a way to show your love and to keep them safe, not just as a way to spoil their fun. Bro, I wouldn't do that. Well, not much anyway. Yeah, OK, got it. Friends, we are delighted to spend time with you this morning. Coming up, we have health tips, and later, Faith for Today will join us to share a powerful devotional. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope, where we desire to help others experience the love and hope we can only have in Jesus. Amen, that's right. You've heard, likely, the phrase, attitude is everything. Mm -hmm. Well, when it comes to our health, attitude truly does make an impactful difference. Dr. Randy Bivens continues his series on the health laws this morning as he delves into the power of attitude. Thomas Jefferson once wrote that nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal. Nothing on earth can help the man with the wrong mental attitude. More currently, the popular motivational speaker Zig Ziglar said, it is not your aptitude, but your attitude that determines your altitude. Attitude. There are literally thousands of studies and articles discussing the impact attitude has on aging and longevity. In a review of 160 published medical studies, it was shown that people who had a positive mental attitude enjoyed better health and longer lives. This link between positive mindset, better health, and longer lifespan was actually shown to be stronger than the link between obesity and reduced lifespan. Let's look at some examples of how our attitude can affect us. One medical study looked at the relationship between anger and heart disease. The participants who demonstrated more anger were found to have 2.7 times more heart disease than the calmer participants. Another study found that people who often felt anxious, unhappy, or depressed were twice as likely to have high blood pressure. And in yet another study, feelings of frustration, tension, and sadness were associated with a doubled risk of ischemic heart disease. Increased rates of heart attack were found in those who tend to worry, with the heaviest worriers increasing their risk for heart attack by two and a half times. The evidence is clear. When we consider these alarming numbers, it is much easier to recognize the pure and positive value of the serenity prayer. The serenity prayer simply asks God to grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, 
and wisdom to know the difference. So what can we do to brighten our outlook on life? What can we do to improve our attitudes and in return gain more thriving and fulfilling years of life? Wake up early. By getting up early, we can get a head start on our daily tasks. That will reduce our stress. We'll also have time for a healthy breakfast, improving both our worldview and our health at the very beginning of our day. Exercise will do your brain and body a lot of good. Nature has been shown to have a calming influence on your psyche. So spend some active time outdoors, enjoying the natural beauty that God has created. Plan ahead. When you know what you're planning to achieve in a given day or week, you will have less stress. By the way, this works particularly well if you remember to wake up early. Understand that things often do not go according to plan. Yes, planning ahead is good, but when something doesn't work out as planned, it's important to view the situation as an opportunity rather than a roadblock. Get spiritually connected. As we've shown in earlier videos, having a relationship with God and being involved at church plays significant roles in overall mental attitude and can significantly add to your lifespan. Be thankful. Have you ever heard the phrase, when life feeds you waves, learn how to surf? No matter what, we can always find things to be thankful for. Try spending less time focusing on yourself and more time focusing on others. This sort of outward thinking can go far in improving your own mental health. Spend time around positive people. Perhaps it goes without saying, but we often mirror the emotions of those around us. Consider who you surround yourself with. Make the conscious decision to be around people who will add cheer and love to your life. Solomon, an ancient king of Israel and widely thought to be the wisest man to have ever lived, once wrote, a joyful heart is good medicine. He reiterated this later writing, for the happy heart, life is a continual feast. In our goal to live longer and more fulfilling lives, attitude may be the most powerful medicine that I, as a physician, can prescribe. It's now time for music that is sure to bless your heart. For we are His workmanship Created in Christ Jesus, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them, we should walk. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained, that we should walk.
Lest any man should boast by grace Are ye saved through faith And that not of yourselves It is the gift of God Not of works Lest any man should boast Ephesians 2 verses 8 any man should boast not of works lest any man should boast Friends, don't go anywhere. Yes, please don't, because when we return, Faith for Today is bringing us a powerful devotional thought. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for staying with us this morning. It's now time for our devotional thought. This morning, it's going to be brought to us by Faith for Today. There's a story about a city dweller who was visiting relatives on a farm and the farmer gave a whistle and his dog herded the cattle into the corral. Then the dog latched the gate with her paw. Wow, that's some dog, what's her name? The city dweller asked. The forgetful farmer thought a minute and then asked, what do you call that red flower that smells good and has thorns on the stem? A rose? That's it. The farmer turned to his wife. Hey Rose, what do we call this dog? If a person is forgetful, it's not often equated with them possessing wisdom, is it? Wisdom is typically thought of the main ingredient to creating a life of legacy. But today we're going to see that wisdom is not about where you're going or even where you want to go. It's about what you are willing to forget and leave behind. Proverbs 6 verses 6 through 8 tells us where to look for solutions here, and it says, Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. The Bible says that there are some little creatures that we can learn from, and though they are very little, they are very wise. Now, when a fool calls someone wise, we're, we're not moved because when a fool calls someone wise, well, a fool is easily impressed. I've heard a lot of people call other people smart that I didn't think were smart. But when God says you're wise, can you imagine all the sages and wise men and scholars and theologians waiting around when God opens his mouth and says, I'm going to show you what is really wise. And he walks past each and every one of them and says, I want you to learn your wisdom from some very little things. Things that are seen as an annoyance, little insects that ruin your picnics. If you want to be wise, God says, I'm going to give you a message through these little things. Don't underestimate them because they are little. Because great things come in small packages. And if you can harness the wisdom of these small creatures, it will launch the rest of your life. He walked past the elephants and the giraffes, overlooked the rhino and hippopotamus, moved past the horse and the deer, stepped over the dogs and cats, and ducked beneath the flying eagles and pelicans until he focused his vision on the ground. It came all the way down to a sandy hill with a little hole in the top. And there he pointed at an ant. And he said, if you can garner the wisdom of this ant, watch the ant. And he points at the ant who is preparing food for the winter. And he's doing it during the summer. It is in the summer when the grass is green and the harvest is plentiful and everything is blooming and there is a wide selection of fruit to be had. It is during that season that the ant ignores where he is because he is filled with a mindset for where he is going. And so he does something that seems foolish at the time that he's doing it. But he does it 
because he has in his mind a place that he's going. And this ant, if we were here to speak to you today, his message would be, point number one, prepare yourself. I'm confident that there's somebody watching today who needs to increase in wisdom right now by preparing yourself. God said, listen to the wisdom of the ant. Prepare yourself. It was summer, but the ant was preparing for winter. Well, let's take this action apart. The Bible not only tells us what he does, but when he does it. The ant totally disregards what has happened in his past. He's not dealing with the issues of his past. He's come to a point of closure about yesterday. He's not rehearsing the same troubles of his past, repeating the same mistakes over and over again. He has closed that chapter in his life. It is a blessing in your life when you can dismiss the past and say, that is over. Many of us are foolish because we're 30 years old, still crying about something that happened when we were 13. We're 40 and still worried about the person who left us at 30. We're 50 years old and we're still whining about mistakes that we made when we were 20. But we'll never be wise when we're working backwards. Watch that ant. He's not working backwards. The other thing that is amazing about him, not only does he disregard his past, he ignores his present. You don't see the ant try to glutton up all the food that he can while he can and fatten himself up as if there's no tomorrow. The ant has the ability to have delayed gratification. He's willing to wait. You cannot prepare yourself if you do not have the patience to wait. If you can't wait, you're going to mess yourself up from what God has for you. The ant has a strategy. His whole philosophy is to get ready for what is about to happen in his life. Look at the ant. The ant ignores the summer and he prepares for the winter. He's taking the food of his summer and moving it toward his winter. He has enough faith to believe that he will be there in the winter. He's not intimidated by any of his enemies in the summer. He has adversities, but he does not believe that any of his natural predators will be able to stop him from getting to the next level. He so disregards his enemies and is busy working on where he's going that he doesn't have time to worry about where he is. Now, I hope you understand the deeper application of what I'm trying to say to you today. The word prepare has a prefix. Pre, which means to do something ahead of time. The word pair... It's like the paring knife that mom used to peel and cut the fruit to make it ready for its intended purpose. To prepare means to get it ready in advance. I want to talk to somebody today because if you're going to obey the wisdom of the ant, you got to be willing to look like a fool. You've got to be busy getting ready for something that you don't need right now. You've got to be out of step with your situation right now, but in step with your destiny so that you are reacting to something that hasn't happened yet rather than responding to something that's going on right now. Godly people do not react. To allow the enemy to make the first move means that he's in charge. The enemy has never made a move that God reacted to. God acts. It is the enemy who's trying to catch up to what he's doing. The ant doesn't go out and grab a crumb that he can't handle. The ant will get a piece of bread that's three times bigger than he is. It'll be so big that he's got to drag it in to get it where he's trying to go. Anyone else would have let it go. But he says, I just can't let it go. Some of you are like the ant. You've got a hold of something and you can hardly carry it. But your vision is bigger than you are. You don't have enough resources, you don't have enough help, you don't have enough time, you don't have enough experience, but you're going to drag it in. It is to you that I say today, don't give up or give in. God has implanted great wisdom in you. Take a lesson from the ants, learn from their ways, and be wise. Thank you, Pastor Roy, for those inspiring words. Amen, and if you would like to learn more about our program, 
please visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up. And don't forget, we're going to be right here tomorrow looking for you as we feature stories on how Hope Channel is changing lives around the world. We will also have a devotional thought by Pastor Mark Finley and much more, including good music. Amen. And if you open the Word of God today and it spoke to your heart in a very special way, visit our website at hope.study where you can receive your free Bible study guides. Again, that's hope.study. We've sure enjoyed being with our friends this morning, haven't we? Very much. It's always a blessing to spend time with you That's every right. morning. And before we go, you know what we love to do at the very end of our program, and that is to share with you a Bible promise. And today's Bible promise comes from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. It says, This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Amen. Friends, Jesus wants everyone to be saved, and He's doing all in His power to save us, and each and every day we have the choice of choosing Him. He can bring you and me into His fold when we make that choice. And as you go through life, let us seek His face. Let us follow the one who longs to give us a future of hope. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, today, Lord, we begin this day with this full assurance that you are with us. You're right here by our side every step of the way. Today, Lord, we know we're gonna expect to experience some challenges, some difficulties, but nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is too difficult for you. So thank you for the hope that we have in you today. In Jesus' name, amen.